gentlemen, and uh, welcome to our set of uh, music by the Uptown Hall Gang. And uh, I'm indebted to my colleague uh, Martin Wheatley uh, for uh, showing me how to adjust the stool. Only he knows the secret. And uh, so that was great. And uh, coincidentally, what a mar marvellous set, wasn't it? That Jack Nelson uh, set. And, uh, Martin and I were both alumni of Colchester Institute, so uh, I'm sure they'd be very proud to see us up here today, droning on the floor. And uh, we're going to start off with the theme tune of the Uptown Hall Gang. One, two, one, two, three. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Please don't talk about me when I'm gone. And that was preceded by My Kai's Comeback, uh, composed by Mel Powell. And that was the theme song of the Uptown Hall Gang. And of course, you're all such avid jazz buffs. I hardly need to tell you that all the great swing orchestras in the 40s had their own, what they called, band within a band. And Bob Crosby had the Bobcats. Uh, Tommy Dorsey had the Clan Lake Seven. Uh, Archie Shaw had the Gramercy Five and Benny Goodman his quartet and trio. And of course on this very stage last night we heard the trio expertly recreated by Lorenzo Baldasso and the guys. Um, now, um, although the group went under Glenn Miller's name, he didn't actually play with them, except possibly on this next number, on the recording of the next number. Um, and uh, the personnel of the band seemed to vary from date to date, and there was actually a French horn in the mix uh, of this next one, but uh, even with the fabulous resources here at Whitney Bay, we couldn't quite run to a French horn. So uh, Dan Barrett here is uh, playing the part of the French horn, and he gets to be Glenn Miller as well. <laughs> and all for the same money. <laughs> so uh, this is, uh, I'll remember eight.
try getting the last word there. Now the Uptown, Uptown Hall um, itself was an imaginary venue um, invented for the wireless. Um, the band actually never recorded as the Uptown Hall gang. More often it was Sergeant Mel Powell and his sextet. Uh, the next number is a case in point. It was recorded in France uh, under the title of the uh, Jazz American um, Mystery Band or something like that. And um, uh, in order to record it, the musicians were breaking military rules, so uh, they had to do this on the sly, so to speak. Um, um, Bird Miller's band uh, were in France. Uh, they moved to France uh, in, uh, late uh, in December 1944, and uh, they were stationed at the Hotel Montmartre, and uh, the conditions weren't very good. It was freezing cold, there was no hot water, uh, sound familiar, folks? It's like austerity in Britain. <laughs> and it's possibly you're not here for the jazz, you've just come to keep warming for the jazz. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, uh, the, their uh, new commander wasn't uh, much liked. In civilian life, he'd been the, the band manager, and he was now Lieutenant Don Haynes and uh, nobody liked him, and morale and discipline was at an all-time low. So for a bit of re light relief, the musicians were going down to the Jazz Club Francais to sit in, and the bass player, Joe Shulman, figured they could make a bit of extra money by doing some recordings, and there was um, like um, um, a, a, a disc-cutting device there uh, attached to the PA, and um, so they got $40 each a session, there were six men, and uh, the first session was in January 1945, and it was supervised by Yvonne Blanc, who was uh, a jazz pianist who ran the Jazz Club Francais. And for this date, she booked the notoriously unreliable Django Reinhardt, and uh, he amazed everybody by turning up and turning up on time. So uh, today, of course, we have the eminently reliable Jakob Allberger, Sweden's answer to Django Reinhardt. So uh, this is uh, Stomping on the Boy.
Now, uh, Matthias is going to take a little rest and uh, David's going to rejoin us and uh, we're going to play a number called Red Light and uh, this is uh, a tune by Mel Powell written uh, over the chords of Love Me or Leave Me, uh, what they call um, uh, um, in classical music a contrafact, a contrafact. And, uh, um, this, as you've heard, the, the Uptown Hall gang um, ranged from Dixieland to Swing, but they were also taking in the newer sounds of the 1940s, and uh, this is very much um, like a kind of a Dizzy Gillespie and Charlie Parker sort of number, um, as, as the instrumentation you'll see, alto and trumpet, uh, suggests, and uh, it's another Mel Powell original called uh, Red Light. So here we are, um, uh, smuggling bebop into the Whitby Bay Jazz Park. <laughs> I shall have my card marked. <laughs> Stay in France now for a delightful number, oh, oui. and uh, it was recorded again by the Jazz Club Mystery Band on the 20th of May 1945. And uh, it's another Mel Power original, another contrafact, and it's uh, a tune written over the chords of uh, um, Stealing Apples. Um, it's Fats Wallace, Stealing Apples. And, uh, 
Melkow called it stealing Smack's apples. And the reason for that is that uh, Smack was the nickname of Fletcher Henderson. Fletcher Henderson had written a famous arrangement for Benny Goodman's orchestra of stealing apples. Right, follow me closely here. <laughs> and uh, and like, um, like Henderson's arrangement, um, this is also in the key of D major, which is quite unusual for jazz. Um, and uh, it begins with uh, a rather off-the-wall um, piano introduction uh, that uh, clearly went above the head of uh, Mel Powell's discographer, Jan Jan Evensmo. Uh, anyway, I can tell you now, Mr. Evensmo, that what he was doing was actually playing on the um, middle eight and the last eight of the tune, albeit in an, an oblique manner. And uh, I think it probably shows that um, this is the direction that Mel Powell was heading in because he became, he left jazz and he became a respected classical musician. And uh, he was, uh, he taught for a time at Yale University and he became the dean of the faculty of uh, the California Arts uh, Centre Institute and, uh, and he won the Pulitzer Prize um, for his um, concerto for two pianos uh, called Duplicates. There we are. We can dine out on this. There'll be a test later. <laughs> Next time there's the pub quiz, you know, you might need this. Stuff. So uh, this is the thing called Stealing Smacks Apples. <coughs>
Yeah, stealing smacks apple. So I love it's, that. I love it. it's, it's the Carlsberg key, isn't it? The freshest parts, the freshest keys are the other beers done. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Right, well, the recordings that Mel Powell's uh, sex step or the Uptown Hall Gang, if you will, made in this country, um, effectively belonged to the American government. And, um, of course, they were made by enlisted men. So for copyright reasons and royalties and all that jazz, um, they couldn't be issued commercially. Uh, so at the end of the war, instead of giving the recordings back to the Americans, uh, in their infinite wisdom, the BBC just scrapped every, everything, apart from about four discs. And the reason we have any recordings by this band is uh, thanks to like home enthusiasts, and one such was the record producer and uh, drummer Carlo Kramer. And uh, clearly his recording equipment was running fast because all the recordings are about a semitone sharp. And, uh, and also you've got the um, atmospheric uh, interference to contend with some, some of the, uh, the these tunes, um, you know, it's very crackly and uh, it's uh, transcribed as nightmare. Anyway, um, I've tried to um, write this one down to the best of my ability, and uh, it's a tune by the band guitarist um, at that particular time in England, Carmen Maestrom, and it's a thing called Shandy. Oh. Oh. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>
now, having uh, successfully slipped in a little bit of bebop uh, earlier with red lights, uh, I'm going to, uh, having softened you up, I'm going to give you another one now. And this is Diz Dizzy Gillespie's Night in Tu Tunisia. Um, now, Strax Langham, who heard this at rehearsal, was sent to me at breakfast. He thinks that uh, Mel Powell took a lot of the um, aggression out of this number. And it's kind of turned it back into uh, a swing tune, really. And uh, Mel Powell takes the melody uh, at the top. Um, so here we go. Night in Tunisia. And uh, this was arranged by the band's French horn player, Addison Cottons. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here today. <laughs>
and uh, now we have uh, another Mel Pal original, and uh, this comes with a sort of a warning. It's called Triple X. Triple X. I've just got a double X on my Okay, yeah, we can stop double X, yeah, but I think he's talking about his beer. Yeah. <laughs> you need beer at this time of day to play jazz. <laughs> okay. Right, here we go then. Um, I'll start there. So you'll notice a lot of these numbers start um, with the piano introduction, and um, a big influence on Mel Powell um, was Teddy Wilson, and of course, if you listen to a lot of Teddy Wilson records, they will start with a, an unaccompanied four or eight bar piano solo and um, Mel Powell really was in that kind of tradition but um, he very much got his own voice uh, on the instrument and it was like a combination of Earl Hines and Fats Waller and uh, Teddy Wilson and all those kind of um, classical um, things that were feeding into his playing. Uh, he was a remarkable um, player, Mel Powell. Um, anyway, there we are. Uh, triple X. <laughs> our last number and uh, uh, maybe finished a bit early because we've got the next band uh, time to set up which uh, is no bad thing um, and uh, well before we go I'd like you to thank these wonderful musicians who've been doing a sterling job with this very difficult music Richard Pite at the drum yeah. Malcolm Stead at the bass That's the ball burger, the bar. Yeah. And we're delighted to have at the festival for the first time Dan Barrett. Yeah. Of course, the very charismatic Enrico Tommaso. Yeah. There we are. And uh, yes, the, and, uh, the country's most handsome. Clarinet player, uh, Gordon Hyde. <laughs> and of course, uh, Gordon's the most handsome tennis act player, the two of oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much.
So I played the part of Martin Lytton and uh, and uh, and then going out with um, well, it, it, you you think we're ending with a slow number, but it suddenly gets very exciting towards the end. And this features Enrico, who will be playing the part of um, Bernie Pribbin, who was a great trumpet player who played to the Uptown Hall game. Um, Bernie Pribbin, yeah, not to be confused with Bernie Privet, the hedge fund. He's on the jumps, right? And uh, yes, no, I'll. I'll quit whilst the going's good. And this is a beautiful ballad by J. Fred Coots called You Go To My Head.